Are you reducing tooth decay with Amadent, the ammoniated toothpaste? Did you pause reflectively and then say yes? Then you've got the first question right on quick as a flash. Thank you, Ray. Good morning, Hey. This is Bill Cullen with radio's most unusual quiz program, Quick as a Flash, brought to you today by Amadent Toothpaste and Amadent Tooth Powder, recommended by more dentists than any other dentifrice in America. Now, to help present our dramatized questions today, we have Ray Block and his music and as guest detective in the Amadent Mystery Special, one of your radio favorites, Nick Carter. <laughs> well, we just want to take this opportunity. There's it. Now, we just want to check. The, the, quick, the uh, flash is actually as quick as a. Uh, our flash was a little late getting here, but you see what happened, actually, was we have a very long wire, and our button is AC, and our producer is DC, and, uh, of course, together we get the famous expression, WADC, a well-known station in uh, a state. Uh, we are all ready to start off with our fastest excuse or game of all. Our six contestants are seated at the long table here on stage, ready and waiting to interrupt our dramatized questions by pressing on the buzzer in front of them like this. <laughs> Working good now. In our first Amadent contest today, we're going to describe an event all of you have read about. Now, as soon as any of you six contestants think you know the event, interrupt the description by pressing on the buzzer in front of you. One who's first to get the correct answer will receive $10 from Amadent, but each contestant has one opportunity in each race. So get ready now. Interrupt quick as a flash as soon as you think you can identify this famous event for $10 from the ammoniated toothpaste. Attention, at 8.30 p.m. the campaign looks like it's all over. Except to any grouchy who wants to hang on, no matter how the signs point. Nay, it is over. Take it from a man who's seen the old god take French leave. It's all over but the tallying up. Or should I say tally-ho for the winner. The surprise victory will certainly gall many who thought it below them to even imagine their favorite could be defeated. But he's just been licked, and decisively. And this time he's lost his final chance for the crown. Never again after this bloody defeat will he challenge anybody. For he had plenty of elbow room to fight with this time. There's a blue flash of lightning followed by the green. It's Blanche Hatfield from Brooklyn, New York, who's going to try to mention the famous event. Blanche, go ahead. That would, would that be Joe Lewis's defeat? Joe Lewis's defeat? I'm sorry, Blanche, that isn't the one we were looking for. Why didn't we think of that? We could have had a spot about that. Uh, Mabel Nelson with a green flash of lightning wanted to take a try. What do you say, Mabel? I was going to say the same thing. Oh, it's a good thing you didn't. You know, it's a real good thing. Now, uh, we still have five contestants uh, eligible. Let's go back to where the gentleman said, never again after this bloody defeat. Will he challenge anybody? For he had plenty of elbow room to fight with this time, but he lost on every count. He came up against an iron duke who cut him down to size. There's a red flash of lightning, and followed by the yellow, Dorothy Albanese from uh, Leicester, England. Uh, I think she has it. What do you say, Dorothy? Is that the Duke of Wellington? The Duke of Wellington. We're, th we're looking for a famous event, you recall. Uh, what is the uh, famous uh, event? Against Napoleon. Yeah, well? Uh, the Battle of Waterloo. The Battle of... You sound very English, are you? Yes. Was the Duke of Wellington an English chap? Yes. <laughs> Did he beat that Napoleon fellow? Yes. Who was French? Yes. At Waterloo? Yes. Oh, you're so right for $10 from Amadou. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's a rather answer. And I'm not making fun of you. I just like to talk to English people because they talk so much better than I do. But after all, almost everybody does. Uh, Dorothy. Uh, how long have you been here for, being here from uh, Leicester, England? I'm a war bride. I came over here four years ago. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, gee whiz. Are you, you're not on land lease or anything like that. No, I'm, not... I'm here permanently. I have two boys and now, well, two and a half. <laughs> two, uh, two and a half? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> well, the British Isles are rather small, you know. Uh, uh, well, anyway, uh, to change the subject back to that which we had just changed it away from, uh, what gave you the idea, Dorothy, that that was uh, uh, Napoleon at Waterloo or the Duke of Wellington? Well, actually... we, we usually refer to the Duke of Wellington as the Iron Duke. That's the... Oh, you do? You, you, you British people do refer to him as the Iron Duke? Yes. Well, say, that's all right, too. We had that in our script, didn't we? You see here? He came up against an Iron Duke. Uh, we had that right there. We had an English writer. Well, he wasn't an English writer. He writes in English. Uh, <laughs> which, of course, makes it difficult to use on this program. But anyway, we had clues like, uh, the fellow said at the beginning, attention. Now, you remember, that was his first word. And we all know that the Battle of Waterloo was fought by soldiers. And soldiers frequently stand at attention. And thereby, uh, from that one word alone, you could possibly have gotten the correct answer. <laughs> Don't you think? 
Huh? I don't know. <laughs> hmm. All right, you'll see for not agreeing with me. Uh, we mentioned 8.30 p.m. Now, everybody knows uh, that uh, the, uh, uh, the 8.30 p.m. was a time of day that passed by during that battle. And, of course, we mentioned any grouchy, and Grouché, by the way, was a French general in it, the old guard, uh, and uh, Napoleon uh, was known as the old guard. Uh, Tally-ho, of course, to show that it was British and things like that. So, oh, we had all kind of clues. But anyway, Dorothy, you have $10 that you didn't have a moment ago. How much is that in pounds? Well, I don't know at the new rate exchange. Let me see. That would be uh, oh, I... three pounds something, I think. Boy, it won't, it won't it sound <laughs> swell when right before the fanfare I say, Dorothy, you have just won three pounds something. Uh, <laughs> uh, three pounds sterling, I guess. But anyway, Dorothy, you have $10, and now I want to meet everybody. Boy, I'm going to meet everybody on the program. Dorothy, you begin the introductions, and everybody go right down the line, and pretty soon I'll know who's here. This is Dorothy Albanese, uh, formerly from Leicester, England, now of Manhattan. Good. Joseph Scamperino from Haverhill, Mass. Blanche Hatfield from Brooklyn, New York. Mm. Leo Gordon from Oakland, California. Mabel Nelson from Hastings, Nebraska. Philip Bond from Jamestown, New York. And Marion Sugden from New Rochelle, New York. Mr. Bond, I notice, uh, are you from the British Isles by any chance, sir? Yes, huh? sir. Yes, sir. I come from Ireland. I rather... <laughs> well, boy. Say, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something I don't often uh, mention on the air. I, I, I was going to say admit, but I don't want anyone to be angry with me. Indirectly, so do I. Uh, would you perhaps, maybe you and I could get together and rebel against Dorothy? I think so. Uh, we'll have another revolution, <laughs> boy. We'll, uh, uh, well, that we'll... didn't seem to go over. There are probably a lot of British people here. Well, anyway, uh, we'll get on with our next contest uh, in just a moment. Uh, but first of all, I want to tell you uh, how glad we are to have all of you with us today on Quick as a Flash. You know, on our first Amadent broadcast this year, I started out by making a promise. I promise you that we wouldn't use any tricks or devices to tell you about Amadent. No singing jingles, no shouting, no drum beating. Now, the story of why Amadent is the toothpaste for you is a simple, straightforward story, and that's how I hope to tell it. I believe you should use Amadent because it's ammoniated. It's a matter of dental record that Amadent, the ammoniated dentifrice, reduced tooth decay by an average of about 50% with four out of five who used it. Now, mothers, think what this could mean to your family. Think back for the last 12 months and count the number of cavities you, your husband, and the children had. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if you could cut the number in half? Well, listen carefully. If your family is like the average, start using Amadent today, and I promise you that you'll cut down on your cavities by almost 50%. So don't delay. Buy Amadent today and help your whole family reduce tooth decay every time they brush their teeth. That's Amadent. A-M-M-I-D-E-N-T. Amadent toothpaste and Amadent tooth powder. They're recommended by more dentists than any other dentifrice. <laughs> well, we've got to get on with this next quick, of a flash, uh, quick as a Flash contest of ours. It's going to be worth $15 from Amadent to the winner. Uh, now that the football season is getting into full swing, Ray Block and the orchestra are going to swing right along with it. Now, they're going to play a group of songs, all of whose titles should suggest the same number, or rather the same member, of a football squad. Now, if you held the position suggested by all these song titles, what would you be? That's our question. If you held the position on a football squad suggested by these song titles, what would you be for $15 from Amadent? <laughs> Your lightning is Joe Scamperino from Haver, Haverhill, Mass. What do you say, Joe? <laughs> what a boy. <laughs> you got it right for $15 from Quick as a Flash and Amadeus. <laughs> well, 
congratulations to Ray and the boys because that was recognized real fast. We had uh, we had three. The wa uh, water boy uh, was. Uh, you got that from the song Cool Water. Is that yeah. right, Joe? Yeah. They started playing water. <laughs> yeah, uh, plain water. Well, that was cool water that Joe. Uh, yeah. that, uh, <laughs> Joe, that Ray and the boys played plain about. Plain water, though. Plain water. Yes. Well, we got all kind of water. You know. Uh, yeah. The first one was Water Music by uh, Handel. Uh, uh, played on the uh, organ by uh, Handel, or was that Bert Berman? Or, well, vice versa. Anyway, the second one was Turkish Towel and finally Cool Water. We were coming up with the old oak and bucket in case anyone uh, had needed it. But Joe uh, Scamporino, is that right, Joe? Yes, sir. Uh, you just won yourself uh, $15, and uh, tell us about yourself. Are you married? I just got married Sunday. <laughs> Uh, what business are you in, Joe? I'm in no business right now. I'm going back to the Navy. <laughs> no business right now, huh? <laughs> well, I will say there's uh, show business like no business. Uh, uh, you, 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 you don't have a job or anything lined up when you get back? Well, when I get back, I have to go to the Navy. See? Oh, you have to go to the Navy? Mm, I got to be called. You're going to get out of one fighting into another, huh? <laughs> <laughs> bad to worse. Yeah, well... Uh, what did you... <laughs> bad to worse. Well, is your wife uh, with you on your honeymoon here? Yes, sir. She's down in the second row. <laughs> down here, huh? And you just said from bad to worse. Boy, wait till you get home. You've been married since Sunday, huh? Mm. Well, might as well be a first time for every fight, I always say, and it's going to happen tonight. Well, Joe, uh, you got $15. <laughs> I know it's going to help a great deal toward furnishing your uh, hammock in the Navy. And... Uh, <laughs> about just how it will help, too. But we're going to get to our next quick as a flash puzzle now because I'm late. I got a date after the show. It's uh, worth $20 to the winner uh, from Amadent, the ammoniated toothpaste. Now, in this race, if you'll all get together, we're going to dramatize our version of a conversation which involves a famous character. What is his name? There's your question. What well-known character might be the subject of this dramatic scene for $20 from Amadent? <laughs> I wouldn't want you to think I was any smarter than all the others, but I made the same mistake. And yet if I'd only trusted my natural instincts, perhaps none of this would have happened. For the very day my younger brother came home with his great news, I smelled a rat. But he was so enthusiastic, like a fool, I didn't stop him. I tell you, sister, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. I've seen this man. With him, there's no telling how far we can go. Wow, here comes Dorothy Albanese from Leicester, England. What do you say, Dorothy? Is that the Pied Piper of Hamlin? Hey. What'd you say, Ray? Hey. Good, that's right. For $20 from Amadin. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, how'd you get that one? <laughs> well, you said the rat, and you could go anywhere, and I remember they followed the uh, Pied Piper, the children and the rat. So I guess that was what it was. you know who that was talking? No. Supposedly? They were two rats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they were going to later allude to the Pied Piper. Oh. <laughs> they were going to allude to him. They haven't even had a chance to allude to him when you get <laughs> I don't mind your winning. You can have all of our money, but let us get our money's worth out of the actors. Do <laughs> <laughs> you, realize, you realize these two actors went to school and studied, and they are two of the finest actors, and I'm not kidding, in New York, and they have done radio, motion pictures, television, and then one fella comes up and he said, I wouldn't want you to think, and that's as far as they go, and you push your big fat buzzer. <laughs> And all of their training is for naught. Uh, if you would like to apologize to them publicly I'm very on the mic. Sorry. Huh? I'm sorry. And I'm glad. <laughs> Wish I'd have married her. I got her bluffed, you know. I... <laughs> That's the first time I ever won an eye. Well, Dorothy, thank you. And just for that, I'm going to give you the $20 you won. Uh, <laughs> for the simple reason that if I don't, we'll have the law on us. And uh, you've won $30 altogether, and I just want to take this opportunity to say to both uh, Barbara Weeks and Arnold Moss that uh, Dorothy Albanese is very sorry you didn't have a chance. Uh, you know, that's the fastest any play ever closed, that, that one. <laughs> even, uh, even one that I put a buck into once went longer than that to the second act. But, uh, Dorothy, you are way ahead. As I, I have all kind of clues I was going to tell you about the Pied Piper of Hamlin, but we didn't, uh, our rats didn't even have a chance to mention it. <laughs> and uh, consequently, there's no use of my mentioning it, but you now have one four-pound something from us in addition to <laughs> two pounds, uh, whatchamacallit, you went a moment ago. So you have 30 American dollars in all, and now I've got an extra special gift for uh, every one of you on the panel. 
I'm going to see that I pass along to each of you a, a tube of Amadent toothpaste, and, uh, and I want you all to enjoy it. Uh, I know you will, too. And as a matter of fact, while, uh, while Dorothy Albanese is being uh, completely sorry about what she did to our actors, I'm going to dash down the line to a lady occupying the left tackle spot down there, uh, and it's, uh, it's Mrs. Marion Sugden, who is already an Amadent user. I'm going to ask her if she won't answer a few questions for me. What is your name? Marion Sugden. Good, that was good. I just wanted to start out easy, you know. And you're from New York here, is that right, Marion? No, from New Rochelle. Oh, New Rochelle. Well, that's pretty close by. Uh, married? Yes. Children? One boy. How old? He's 14. Uh-huh. Now, here comes the all-important question. This is the one I've been building up to. Uh, how long have you been uh, an Amadent uh, user, man? Oh, uh, more than a year. About a year last year. Together? Uh, do you use Amadent toothpaste or Amadent tooth powder? We use both. I'm a powder user, and my son prefers paste. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, how about the rest of the family? Uh, you, you said your, your son uses Amadent, uh, and how about your how about your husband? Is he oh, used? yes. Oh, I'm happy about that. Now, before you began using Amadent, did uh, you and your family have many cavities? Yes, we didn't have a very good dental record. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in other words, there were cavities in the family. Is that right? That's right. Now, since using Amadent, have you noticed a reduction in the number of new cavities? Oh, yes, mm -hmm. considerably. Uh, how many cavities uh, would you say uh, uh, you had before your last dental check, by the way? Uh, we had four last year, at mm -hmm. least my son did, and this year it was reduced to only one cavity. We were In very other words, happy about that. Since using Amadent, it, it cut down that much, is that right? right. Uh, why, uh, why did you change to Amadent, uh, Miss Sugden? Well, originally I read about it in a magazine. Mm -hmm. And then I consulted my dentist, and he thought it might be a wise idea. My son had had quite a lot of trouble for a mm -hmm. youngster, and uh -huh. anything uh, might be good, he thought. And then he was very happy after mm -hmm. we had used Amadent to see that the cavities had been so considerably reduced. Well, I'm very happy that you're happy, and thank you, Mrs. Sugden, very much. And to all you at home, let me repeat this. If you had cavities in the past year, take action as Mrs. Sugden did. Change your toothpaste. Change away from the toothpaste that allowed those cavities to occur. Change to Amadent toothpaste. Remember, Amadent toothpaste and Amadent tooth powder are recommended by more dentists than any other dentifrice. All right, now we're going to get to that big race of ours, the Amadent Mystery Special. In the special, we're going to test your powers of observation and deduction with a puzzle in crime. To set the stage for us this week, we've invited one of your favorites, Lon Clark known to all of you as Nick Carter. Lon, come on out here and say hello. The contestant who first finds a clue which solves the mystery will be awarded $25. And now, quick as a flash, presents Nick Carter in Murder Pays a Final Call. I'm very partial to the story I'm about to tell because for me, it proves conclusively that there's no such thing as the perfect crime. Here, the murderer overlooked just one little detail, but that was enough to hang him. Let's go back to the night of July 7th, 1944. If you looked into the New York apartment of Evelyn Lyons at 9 o'clock, you'd find that young lady picking up her phone and dialing. Carter, this is Evelyn Lyons. I've got some more dope on that Steve Chapman guy for you. Oh, well, fine. What is it? Oh, wait a minute. I think I heard someone at the door. I better hang up now, but I'll call you right back. I wouldn't make book on that. Steve. Yeah, it's me, sugar. How did you get in here? Oh, I just walked in. You might have had locked the door. Uh, well, I'm, I'm certainly glad to see you, Steve. Uh, you don't really mean that. Honest, I do. You got a funny way of showing it. What do you mean? Who are you talking to on the phone just now? Nobody in particular. It's funny. I had an idea it was Nick Carter. Nick Carter? Are you nuts? What would I call him? Well, you might be developing scruples in your old age. Who knows? Maybe you think it's better for the Army kids to have airplanes made out of good steel instead of us selling it in the gray market. Oh, you know me, Steve. I wouldn't rat. No? Then who tipped off Nick Carter to pick up Tony Fabruzzi and Pete Baker? I, I wouldn't know. You liar! Ah! You don't mind if I turn on the radio, do you? No, Steve, you must. You wouldn't. Wouldn't I? Please, please, you can't kill me. I'll do anything you want. We'll talk about that later. What kind of orchestra do you want, Evelyn? <laughs> Sweet or hot? How about swing and rock with Ray Block? 
Ah, that's what I call good music. Evelyn, I'm going to give you one more chance. Sure, Steve. I'll do anything you say. I want you to phone Nick Carter again. This time, I'll tell you what to say. Hello? Hello? Is that you, Carter? Yeah. This is Evelyn Lyons again. I can't hear you. You'll have to speak louder. Isn't that a radio going? Yeah. Listen, Carter. Tell him you lied about me. Uh, you know that story I told you about Steve Chapman? Well, well, it wasn't true. What? I lied from start to finish. He's got nothing to do with that gray market in steel. You only said that to get even with me because I threw you over. I made up the whole story because I was jealous. He gave me up for another girl. And to prove to him that you were lying. And to prove to you I was lying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Welcome, Nick Carter. Steve Chapman. In the flesh. Where's Evelyn Lyons? Over there by the phone. She's dead. Carter, I gotta hand it to you. You certainly can call him. What do you know about this, Steve? Well, as I stepped out of the elevator, I heard a shot came from Evelyn's apartment. I tried the door, but it was locked. Then how come I found you in here? You're forgetting, Carter, did you... Uh-oh, red flag. Dorothy Alvarez again. Yes, Dorothy, what do you say? I don't think the door was locked. Huh? I don't think the door was locked. Well, it, it could possibly have been locked. That doesn't disprove the story. That isn't it. I'm sorry, Dorothy. Oh. We'll go back to where where the white flash of lightning hit. Yeah, yeah Leo. I, I Leo think Gordon that, is this, uh, yes? Yes. Uh, yeah. on the, uh, when uh, she was speaking on the phone, she mentioned the fact that he was in the room already. No. That somebody was in the room. No, she hadn't. No, I'm sorry, Leo. We have four contestants eligible. We'll go back to where Nick Carter just said, then how come I found you in here? You're forgetting, Carter. This used to be my place, and when I gave it up, I forgot to hand in all my keys. Go on. I let myself in, and then I saw the poor kid, so I sat down to wait. Didn't you try to do anything for her? No, I'd have been wasting... There's a uh, orange flash of lightning, Joe Scamperino. What do you say, Joe? Well, uh, the orchestra was playing when she was shot, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, when he got in there, he said he just got in there. The orchestra wasn't playing then. The radio, I mean. Uh, in other words, he said he just got in and mm. sat down. Is yeah. That, and you conclude from that then that... that the, he must have been in there before and shut off the radio. Which is the clue we were looking for, and you have yourself $25 from Amadeus. That's good. Say, mothers, next time you're brushing your teeth, do this. Look in the mirror, count the fillings. Why not help your children avoid the pain and grief that you've been through? Give them the chance you never had. Change your toothpaste. Change your family's toothpaste. Change away from the toothpaste that you were using when you got those cavities. Change to Amadent, ammoniated toothpaste. Remember, Amadent toothpaste and Amadent tooth powder are recommended by more dentists than any other dentifrice in America. As we told you before, the uh, reason Evelyn Lyons obviously was murdered was that when Nick Carter spoke to her on the phone, he heard the radio. He had difficulty hearing her. Yet when he entered the apartment, the radio was off. Evelyn died instantly, naturally, so she couldn't have turned it off by herself. Someone else had to be there, and because the lie came from the gentleman, obviously he was the one who did. Nick, you certainly showed us how tough uh, you could make it for some people. Well, I accept that as a compliment, Bill. Well, good. Uh, what's uh, tomorrow's story going to be like, Nick? It's about some tough gamblers who found that when the chips are down, the game is up. Uh-huh, and we're going to be looking forward to it. And I want to say thanks again to you, Nick Carter. That was really a swell job. And uh, I also I also want to tell our, our friend uh, Joe Scamperino over there that he did a great job. You now have $15 plus $25 is a grand total in all of $40 for you. So you leave Dorothy Albanese. She has $30. You're ahead by $40. And uh, you'll be able to really set up housekeeping in that Navy ship of yours. Now, you'll be able to buy a, a real plush kind of hammock that I, that I know is going to be real swell for you. But anyway, you've done a swell job. And say, uh, before we go on, here's something right now we want you all to hear. Mom, what'll I do? Bill just phoned and wants to come over. Well, that's fine, Sue. Why are you so upset? Oh, but Mom, my hair's so oily and horrid, and I haven't time to wash and set it. I simply can't let Bill see me looking like a creep. Oh, don't worry about it, dear. Just use my Minipoo dry shampoo and you'll have clean, lovely hair in ten minutes. And Minipoo won't disturb your waves either. Yes, girls, here's one time mother knows best. Minipoo dry shampoo is the easy ten-minute way to fresh, shining hair. There's no water, no setting with Minipoo. It's safe, convenient, easy to use when you have a cold or any confining illness. Minipoo whisks away all dust and oil in ten minutes. So girls, don't let an unexpected date or cold catch you with dull, oily hair. Get Minipoo, M-I-N-I-P-O-O. -O. 
Minipoo Dry Shampoo today. On sale at all drug counters. Inexpensive, too. 30 shampoos, a free brush, and a leaflet of easy-to-follow instructions in every package of amazing Minipoo Dry Shampoo. Before we go on, I'd like to say a few words about Texas. Blanche Hatfield from Brooklyn, New York, is also one of our contestants. Leo Gordon of Oakland, Mabel Nelson, Hastings, Nebraska, and Philip Bond of Jamestown, New York. They haven't won anything yet, but I know they're going to get in there and pitch real hard and see what they can do. We have uh, people all the way from Hastings, Nebraska. Hey, that's all right. I'll, I'll tell you what. Now that, uh, now that you're all here and ready to go, we have another great big extra bonus contest, and this one is going to be worth $30 to the winner. You ready for that, Mr. Bond? Yes, sir. We have to do something for the Irish, you know. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Did you have any ideas at all before, Mr. Bond? No, sir. None at all. Well, I had a little idea on that, but huh? I was thinking about it. I'd, well, I'd... think it. Well, it's good to think about it first, yeah. Mr. Bond. <laughs> I, that's, that's typical of the Irish, you know. We I'll never wait, act hastily, do I'll we? We're waiting for a little bit more to come out. Yeah, that's us, boy. We had our shillelagh out there ready to whap it when it did, too, didn't we? <laughs> I'll tell you what now. Uh, everybody get ready because here comes our next one. In this contest, it's a $30 contest, by the way, we're going to hear from a character in a work of literature of world renown. We want you to name the work. Get ready now and interrupt as soon as you know this widely read about literary work for $30. She could have had everything more than the dreams her young head was filled with. For her beauty seemed to turn night into day and her voice was like the echo of soft music. Garments of silk and rich brocaded robes would have been hers. The title of countess and one of the finest villas awaited her. But in the end, all she got was a statue of gold put up to her memory. Oh, for heaven's sake, here comes first the orange flash of lightning followed by the blue flash of lightning, Joe Scamp. That'd be Scamper. a million. Huh? Pygmalion? Pygmalion? No, I'm no. sorry, Joe. That isn't the one we were looking for. Blanche Hatfield, you want to take a crack at it. With I don't the blue... want to say anything. Huh? I don't want to say anything. <laughs> you don't want to say anything? Flash, we got a girl who doesn't want to say anything. <laughs> on our program. Boy, that's all right. I just want you all to stay tuned because this might develop into something. Uh, get ready now. We still have five contestants eligible. We're, we're going back to where the lady said, the title of Countess and one of the finest villas awaited her. But in the end, all she got was a statue of gold put up in her memory. Oh, I should have stopped it somehow. But she was as loyal as she was lovely. I should have told her parents. But how could I betray the trust of a child whom I brought up, in whose face I saw the first miracle of first love? I knew when she came home that night she would never forget the tempestuous youth who'd forced his way into the masked ball and fallen in love with her at first sight. The next day they were married, secretly. And from that day on, death lay waiting for them. Oh, I knew it would come, but not so soon. The very first day of their marriage, her husband was banished for killing her cousin who'd picked a violent quarrel with him on the street. And her father did not know that when he arranged for the young bride to be married to account that his daughter was already married, if she'd only told her father, instead of going through with that scheme, instead of taking that terrible drink which made her appear dead for two days, if, if, if... Red Flash of Lightning, Dorothy Albanis from Le Leicester, England, and Dorothy, who already has won $30, and uh, she's second to Joe Scamperino, who's won 40 is going to try to forge ahead by saying... I'm not sure of the name, but I think it, it, she took a drink from the goblet, and the goblet was poisoned. Portia, is it Portia or something like that? No. No, the quality of your answer is not strange. No, that is not <laughs> what we were looking for, Dorothy. We, we don't have the answer yet. Let's go back to where the lady said, instead of taking that terrible drink which made her appear dead for two days. If... If the news had reached him, he would have not broken into her tomb and drank poison at her side. Ooh, flash of lightning. Here's Blanche Hatfield. If you recall correctly, Blanche Hatfield said just a moment ago, I don't want to say anything. But now, obviously, she does. So let's see what she said. Would that be the sleeping beauty? No. Your first answer was better, where you didn't say anything. No. <laughs> I'm only kidding you, dear. Now, <laughs> gee whiz, that was a go. I'm sorry, Blanche. Give her a dollar anyway of your money, Dick. Uh, that isn't the right answer, Blanche. Let's go back to where the lady said if the news had reached him, he would not have broken into her tomb and drank poison at her side. And she would not have awaked a few minutes later and stabbed. The green flash of lightning, please be right because we're late. What do you say? Snow White. 
No. No. White flash lighting. Please be right, Leo. What do you say? Romeo and Juliet. Thank you, Leo. You got it, and you got $30. Well, I guess that's just about does it one way or another for today. We'll see you again tomorrow at the same time when Nick Carter once again will be our guest detective in the mystery special. Till then, we'll remind you that the answer was Romeo and Juliet. $30 goes to Leo Gordon from Oakland, California. This is Bill Cullen saying thanks ever so much for listening, and uh, this program is produced by Procter & Lewis, directed by Richard Lewis, written by Gene Wang. Lon Clark, maybe you heard us, Nick Carter, sponsored by the Cudahy Packing Company, makers of Old Dutch Cleanser. Quick as a Flash fans, get Quick Magazine and catch our Quick as a Flash quiz. Bye, everyone. This is the American Broadcasting Company. WJZ New York's first station and WJZ-FM.